We are so excited to have one of our very own American Cancer Society funded researchers, Dr. Darren Robolaire, Associate Professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at Boston University. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you? Good, thanks for having me today, Desiree. We are thrilled to have you. Um, we so appreciate all the hard work you're doing for cancer patients and their families. Um, your lab is developing a wearable probe to monitor breast tumors during therapy. So tell us how this device works. Does it hurt? Is it easy to use? Sure. So yes, we're developing a wearable probe. Let me show you what it looks like. So here it is. Can you see it? This is the bottom. I can Flex see it looks very thin. It's thin, yep, and it will go right on the skin of the patient, just like you can see in my arm there. I'm showing it on my arm, but of course this would go on the skin of the breast over a tumor location. And so the idea here is that for patients that have already been diagnosed with breast cancer, one of the problems is they will often get chemotherapy or another type of treatment, and there's enormous variability. Some patients respond to the treatment, other patients don't. And physicians want to know as early as possible during therapy who's responding, who isn't. And that's what the wearable probe is designed to determine. It uses light, sort of like a Fitbit that you might have in your wrist, but the light is going into the breast tissue through the tumor, and then we're measuring the light that comes back out. And from that, we can measure the amount of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood in the tumor, and we can track that over time. How would this probe be used in a clinical setting? I mean, could physicians follow patients remotely using this device? So we've developed the, the device in the lab and we're at the stage where we're testing it on patients without breast cancer. So we ask subjects to come into the lab and we test to make sure that the device is working the way we think it is. The next step will be taking it to the clinic and measuring on, using it to measure patients with breast cancer, but we're just gonna do that in the hospital to start with. So patients who are gonna come into the hospital anyway to get their chemotherapy. Now the idea for the future, because the probe is so small and portable, it connects to us a small electronics device that could travel with the patient, that perhaps we can have patients actually take the probe home and send the data back to the physician so we can track these patients continuously during therapy and try to identify when the treatment is working and when it stops working. How has the American Cancer Society funding impacted your career? Unfortunately, we all have uh, know someone, a loved one, um, who has, you know, heard those words, you have cancer, and how does this make a difference in your research work? Well, I can tell you that the American Cancer Society Research Scholar Grant, which is a grant from the ACS that funds new investigators, is the very first external grant that I got in my lab. So that's a really big deal for me. It uh, basically kicked off my whole research program, allowed me to hire the first PhD students and postdocs, and that has led to this project and other projects in the lab. So I couldn't be happier with American Cancer Society that really have allowed my research program to blossom. Thank you so much, Dr. Robolaire, um, and thank you for all that you do in the fight against cancer. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you, Desiree.